Austin Rivers with the buzzer beater. Duke remembers that. I'm back. I'm cheering. Penn Pavilion. Getting ready for the game tonight. This is time for Carrie's Court again. The opportunity for folks in the crowd to ask Skip and Stephen A some questions. My friend Adam is from our neck of the woods. You're you're a New Englandite, so to speak. Uh, you have a question for Skip and Stephen A, but I find it interesting. You say that you are uh, an economics major and you'll be able to manage the millions pretty soon. Yeah, as soon as I graduate, yeah. I'm your guy. So I'll right be here. around. Right here, guys. Right you got it. Sharon, Massachusetts. <laughs> Stephen A, question for you. Uh, my question is: Will Jaleel Okafor be a superstar in the NBA? I think he'll be a, 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 a big-time big man. I think he'll be a star. Um, when you say superstar, I think box office. I don't consider Jaleel Okafor to be somebody who will be box office. I consider him somebody who will be a premier big man in the game of basketball within three to four years, probably sooner. And I think that he's going to be somebody that's a franchise builder. You know, you got to remember, Tim Duncan ain't box office, but he's a star. But when I say superstar, I don't think just mm. about your abilities as a player. I think about somebody that people walk through the turnstiles just to see you. I don't see that. Mm. I'm with you on this. I'm already ready to say that Jaleel Okafor will be a star in the NBA. I'm going to reserve superstar status because I need to see more from Jaleel starting tonight. I need to see him play a little harder and better on the defensive end. He doesn't block shots yet like he should. He, he might be able to, but we're not talking yet about an Anthony Davis who can step out and shoot threes. He, he shoots technical free throws for New Orleans. We, we haven't seen that yet, but we might. But right now, I'm already ready just on offensive skill size to go star. You guys, we got Tyler. It's his first time on television. He's a little nervous, so we'll take it easy on him. Tyler, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Welcome to be here. Uh, I'm from Goldsboro, and my question is for Skip. <laughs> will the photograph of Jameis Winston out of shape, will it affect his, uh, his draft stock? I say the photo of Jameis being a little overweight, it looks like, because there's a bungee cord tied around his waist and, and being pulled. It will not affect his draft stock at all. He will still go, I believe, first overall to Tampa. And Stephen A, way too much is being made of this. I've communicated with George Whitfield, his quarterback guru, about this. That picture was taken about five weeks ago. And again, he was being pulled by a cord, which made his stomach look like it was hanging over the cord. And yet, let, let's just say, for the sake of argument here, that, that he weighs a few pounds too many. Do you know how many NFL quarterbacks carry a little extra weight because they need to? The pocket passer, Tony Romo, a, a guy that I've pushed on this show quite a bit. You don't think he's carrying a few extra pounds? He needs them in the pocket because he takes such a beating. You don't think Ben Roethlisberger carries a few extra pounds of body armor to protect him in the pocket because he takes so many hits? You better believe that he does. So I don't have a problem if he weighs. Uh, George says he's down about 225. If he wants to weigh 230, no big deal. He's not a running quarterback. I'm not interested in my quarterback looking like a model, all right? That's number one. No, you don't need a six-pack. Number two, the day... If, if, if you watch Tom Brady in the NFL scouting combine and what he looked like at that time he was coming into the league, nobody had a problem with it then. I don't want to hear a problem with it now. Jameis Winston's only criteria should be, from a physical perspective, in terms of his abilities, obviously, I'm not talking about off the field stuff, on the football field, can you throw the football? I don't care how he looks. Don't get me wrong. I don't want him looking like Jamarcus Russell. We don't want that. We don't want that. But at the same time, I'm not concerned about him in the slightest because the one thing he has proven to be is a gamer. And that's all I care about. I'm with you. All right, guys, I got Andre here. He Look at this guy. He could also be a quarterback. You're pretty mm. tall. He ro You were on the road team here? I was on the road team, yes, uh, ma'am. Okay, you played football? In high school. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You got a question for Skip. I do. Skip, this question is for you. If you took the all-time five best players from North Carolina – and Duke's all-time five best, mm -hmm. and they play the game right now, who would win? Okay, as they are right now, or as they were as pro basketball players? Interesting question, but as in college, when they were oh, in college. Oh, if, if they were in, if college? They were in college? Skip, look at this debater. Interesting question, he says to you. You know what that is? It, it is a fascinating <laughs> question. Is. So I have to go back, turn back the clock yep. to how good they were at Carolina and at Duke. Okay, I definitely can make the case that under Coach K, Duke's program has been better than North Carolina's program. Okay. My, 
My problem with this question is one team is going to have Michael Jordan and one team is not going to have Michael Jordan. I would have to lean toward the team with Michael Jordan, even the college Jordan, who is a little bit under wraps from Coach Smith. And when, when I throw in on top of him Worthy and Vince and Stackhouse and Rashid, I think there would be a little more firepower on the Carolina side. That's, that's my gut feeling. But, but it's a Michael Jordan issue. I think Skip Bayless in this particular instance is far too kind. The fact of the matter is, from a player's perspective, y'all need to stop. If you know anything about basketball, the two don't even compare. Carolina's success has been predicated on the quality of its players. Duke's success has been predicated on the quality of its coach. Mike Krzyzewski is the reason the Duke program is what it is. The players that have sifted through North Carolina are the reason their program is what they did, what they've been able to accomplish. From Jordan and Worthy and Kenny Smith and Sam Perkins, and you know, and Kenny, you know, the list goes on at Rashid Wallace, Vince Carter, Antoine Jameson. The list goes on. And obviously, you had Grant Hill, Christian Layton, and Bobby Hurley, and these boys. Jay Williams, Jay Williams, who to me doesn't get noticed nearly enough. Jay Williams was big time. Yeah. Okay? Hey, but and Elton Brand. And Elton, um, yeah, Elton Brand was big time too. But, but, but Boozer, again, maybe as Boozer. a college player, on a pro, listen, in terms of what their basketball resumes have been, there's no comparison. Let's stop it. Y'all know better. <laughs> okay, all right, let's be friendly. All right, you guys, and that was the end of Carrie's Court. Mama still got it, hanging out with the young ladies. Mm -hmm. Little mama still got it. Well, we go to break. We want to find out who wins the game. It's the hashtag we need you to respond to. It is TARS or Blue Devils. That's the hashtag. Blue, is it TARS or Blue Devils? What's our hashtag there? Heels is the tag. That's the one. Heels or Blue Devils. They changed it. Respond to that on Twitter. If I, and we come back, we're talking about A-Rod. You guys want to do a cheer? Ladies and gentlemen, we're just about to leave. Moments away. Duke campus, you've been wonderful. We asked you on the Twitter who would win tonight's game. And the results are in. I agree. I agree. I agree. We asked on the Twitter who would win tonight's game, and here are the results, guys. They're pretty amazing. 72% say UNC. What? Stephen A., did our Twitter followers get it right? Well, no surprise there. Half of them, if not most of them, don't know what the hell they're talking about. Mm -hmm. dude. It wouldn't surprise me at all if these teams split this year. And it will be a close, hard-fought contest. But tonight inside Cameron Indoor Stadium, although North Carolina will come out blazing, they will attack, they will get an early lead. Duke will amp it up when it's time. Duke wins tonight 84-74. 84-74. Way to go. So, you know, the, the Carolina students obviously jumped on Twitter today exactly. and outvoted you and stuffed the ballot box, but your team tonight will outshoot Carolina and Cameron Indoor. I, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go higher score. I'm gonna go ninety to eighty. The Duke will pull away late in this game because Quinn Cook, Tyus Jones will heat up from three. Okafor will wear down that front line. Now, before we go, we obviously want to thank the students at North Carolina. We had a wonderful time there yesterday in Chapel Hill. Today, we say thank you, Duke.